My name is Jewel Earhart. I'm a mineral engineering student at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. When I tell people what I do, mineral engineering, I'm almost always asked the same exact thing. What's that? What will you do? I go to the School of Mining and I'm a member of one of the smallest departments. But to be fair, mineral engineering and mining is a small community worldwide. Enough about me, I know, I know, disappointing. Don't worry, I'll be circling back. But let's look at the big picture. What comes to mind when I ask you what a mineral is? Some of you may be picturing something like this. Although these crystals are very beautiful and minerals, they're not exactly what a mineral is. Some of you may associate minerals with vitamins and health. Also very valid and technically minerals are used, but not exactly what I'm getting at. What about mining? What comes to mind if I ask you to picture mining? From my experience, most people tend to picture old photographs of miners from way back when, or the seven dwarfs from Snow White. But mineral engineering and mining is much, much more. What if I told you all of the following wouldn't be possible without minerals? Food. Farming requires fertilizer, which relies heavily on many minerals that we produce, three of which are phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. Housing and infrastructure. Your house is almost entirely made up of minerals. Again, just to name a few, copper, nickel, and iron. Automobiles, but not just automobiles, any kind of technology. From a study written and reviewed by professionals in the field, it was found that over 60 elements are required in the production of one computer chip alone. But what uses even more minerals than just regular old technology? Eco-friendly technology. For example, solar panels, electric cars, and wind turbines. So let's get an idea of a total here because we're racking up to quite a bit of mineral usage. This is the mineral baby. Every single person on average uses this quantity of minerals in their lifetime. 21,000 pounds of iron ore, 13,000 pounds of phosphate rock, and almost 1,000 pounds of copper. Take all of these essential minerals together and add them up, and you get that number right in the middle of the screen. 3.19 million pounds of material per person. The global population is currently 7.9 billion. Let's multiply this by the quantity of minerals each of us uses to get an idea of what the mining industry is currently providing for us. 3.19 million times 7.9 billion is equal to 38 quintillion pounds of material. That's where I come in. Mineral engineers figure out how to provide these materials to literally everyone, the entire world, for essential things that we all use. How does such a small community manage this? Well, by the skin of our teeth and barely. And this is right now. Imagine when everyone and their mother has an electric car and solar panels. But this is the goal. We call this replacement of old technology with new eco-friendly green technology, the Great Reset. But electric cars use six times the minerals of a conventional car. And all green technologies, wind turbines, electric cars, solar panels, all require heavy amounts of minerals that we are already struggling to provide for the technology we have now. And heavy amounts of metals such as graphite, nickel, cobalt, lithium, and rare earth metals. We call these essential metals technology minerals. According to a study published by the Department of Earth Science, to accomplish this great reset and transition to eco-friendly automobiles, so just cars here, we would need 8,300,000 pounds of cobalt, over a million pounds of lithium, and 94,500,000 pounds of copper every year. This is 80 times our current production of cobalt and lithium, and five times our current production of copper yearly. In a peer-reviewed paper, experts from academic, government, and industrial institutes across five continents published their findings on this issue. They found that since there are so few people in the mineral engineering and mining industry, the current progression of eco-friendly technology is just not sustainable. This transition would up mineral usage by almost 500%, which just isn't currently possible. There must be attention brought to optimizing the extraction, 
use and recycling of minerals if we are ever going to enact the Great Reset. One of the experts, Salem H. Ali, says it best. It's about managing the flow of resources from the ground, to the product, to the consumers, to the recycling. To optimize extraction, consumption, and recycling, one thing we can all do is spread awareness. How can we fix an issue that isn't even vocalized? Huge societal concerns surrounding climate change had created a huge movement in society, which led to huge efforts in the advancement of eco-friendly technology. We don't see this concern surrounding mineral consumption and resourcing. We need a huge movement surrounding mineral use and recovery, so a huge effort can be put into sourcing the materials we need to implement these eco-friendly technology advances. This is much closer to us on a daily basis. Like I said earlier, we practically need minerals for everything. We can do our best as individuals to talk about this, to conversate, as much as we talk about climate change or saving the turtles. This is how we will create a movement. A single viral video of a turtle with a straw in its nose caused a massive awareness surrounding plastic pollution. So much so that plastic straws were eliminated from many establishments. From this example, we know that spreading awareness can cause a change bigger than ourselves by holding large corporations accountable. Companies will make a change to save face. We know this, but why even bother when consumers aren't aware of an issue? So share this video. In this world, social media is a powerful tool used far too little for positive change. To optimize use, we must limit consumption. We need to think twice when we upgrade to the latest smartphone just because it came out. And treat our charging cables with a little more care so we don't have to constantly be replacing them. If we use less material for the things we have now, it will leave more available for the things we hope to have in the future. Even though this will only account for a small percentage of our mineral usage, anything helps. I mean, you saw those numbers, they were in the quintillions. To optimize extraction, we must expand the mining industry. We can recycle and spread the word all we want, but the only way to truly solve this issue is to acquire more people to source the materials for the Great Reset. We can advance eco-friendly technology for ages, but it won't truly make a difference in greenhouse gas emissions if this technology isn't available to everyone and their mother. If we had more mineral engineers, it would be much easier to obtain the appropriate minerals, including rare earth metals, in the quantity required to make eco-friendly technology more accessible. And maybe I won't have to constantly be explaining what I do to literally everyone. Don't worry, we aren't the ones digging in the dirt. We tell people how and where to do that. In engineering, mineral engineers are in the highest demand. So I encourage you to consider mineral engineering as a possible field of study. This is where the transition starts. This is how we prevent further damage to our environment. This is how we save the world. Thank you.